Hey, Joe Gilder here from Home Studio Corner, talking about the PreSonus Studio Live Series 3 mixer, specifically how we're gonna hook up our microphone and line inputs into the mixer. Now, it's pretty straightforward, but there are a couple of quirks or differences on the board that you want to be aware of so that you put yourself in a good position. One of the best things you can do when considering even purchasing a piece of equipment, and certainly after you've bought it, is just spend some time looking at the back of it. If we're talking about rack mount gear, mixers, things like that, you can learn a ton by just looking at how it's laid out and especially how the inputs and outputs are arranged. Now a digital system is a little bit different because a lot of the core processing happens inside the onboard computer essentially, but as far as getting signal in and out of the device, it's all on the back panel, so let's take a look at it. So this mixer is laid out really well. You can see, and we've gone through this in a previous video, what all the inputs and outputs do, but specifically I wanna talk about the inputs and outputs for your microphone and line inputs. If you look on that top row, if you start from the right and work your way to the left, we've got mic inputs one through 12, okay? Then if we go down beneath that, we've got mic line inputs 13 through 24. And if you look at those jacks, if you're not familiar with that, there's something called a combo jack. So a microphone input is almost always a three-prong XLR connection, the one you're used to using with a microphone. Line inputs can be one of either. They can either be XLR, but more often than not, on stuff like this, they're quarter inch balance line inputs. If you look down on the bottom left where it says aux inputs, left and right, one and two, those are quarter inch balanced connections. These combo jacks under mic line 13 through 24, those will accept either a microphone input or a line input. And the way you change that is by deciding whether you're gonna plug in an XLR connector or you can plug a quarter inch connector right in the middle of the jack. Now, one obvious question would be, why didn't they just include the combo jacks on every channel? Why are the first 12 only microphone inputs and the second 12 mic or line inputs? The answer, I don't know. I'm guessing it had something to do with cost. It's probably more expensive to put combo jacks in than it is to put regular inputs. And I'm guessing most folks are gonna use mostly mic inputs and just need some inputs for the line inputs. Now, when I first got the board and started trying to hook up all my stuff, I've got a handful of outboard equipment, specifically several preamps over here. And I had an idea of how I wanted to hook them up. I wanted this you know, second channel here to go into input four. And I went to the back of the board to plug it in, and guess what, input four is for mics only. Now I could get an adapter to go from quarter inch to XLR, but that actually wouldn't work well because I'd be running a line level signal into a mic input, which would likely cause a lot of distortion because it's expecting to see a much lower input. So line outputs from the line level gear, like preamps and compressors, things like that, need to go into a line level input, which is that second row of inputs where it can be mic or line. So I was initially bummed out thinking the very first line input I have available to me is channel 13, when I really ideally wanted to put it into channel four or five. But then I realized this is a digital board and you can customize everything. So if I wanna put my ADL 700 preamp into the line input of channel 13, I can still have it come up on, where is it? on fader number five. Because if you may recall from previous videos, if we use the user layer, if we use the input button, we're seeing all the channels like you would expect to on a normal analog board. Channel one, and then channel two, and channel three. You can't move them. But on the user bank, you can have them in any order that you want. That's really, really great. That means I can have my preamp show up exactly on the board where I want it to show up without having to repatch anything. If one day I'm recording kick drum, or a drum set and I wanna put the kick drum through that preamp, I can rearrange the order so I still have things in the order that I like, kick, snare, toms, things like that. The next day I might wanna put it in a different spot because I'm recording in a different fashion, so the digitalness of the board allows you to quickly and easily do that. If you haven't seen that video, you literally switch to user mode, hold down the select button, and a menu pops up and shows you what channel do you want to show up on this fader. I could be wrong here, but for most folks using the Studio Live, you're gonna be using mostly the built-in microphone preamps, which sound fine, they're just nice, clean preamps. If you have external devices that need line inputs, if you have the 24-channel board, you get 12 line inputs, which for me has been plenty. I have plenty of those that I don't use, um, but I could see that being a problem for folks. Maybe you have 24 channels of really nice high-end preamps, and you wanna bring all of those in. There's not really a way to do this on this board. That may be different with a 32-channel, honestly, I don't don't know, but that's something to look at and consider. If you're like me and you've got four channels of preamps, an Avid 11 rack, and a keyboard rig that has a quarter inch output, 
I mean, that's all the inputs I need as far as line inputs go. Uh, I'm totally fine with this. All right, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.